Thank you for joining us. I'm Haley Hernandez in for Lisa. And I'm Andy Sirota. One year ago, 19 children and two teachers were preparing to wrap up the school year. Instead, a gunman took their lives at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. KPRC 2 investigator Mario Diaz joining us live from outside the school. Mario, what has taken place in the past hour? Well, Andy, let me tell you that statewide there has been a moment of silence, uh, a minute there to remember what took place here in Uvalde a year ago. Where I stand right now, Andy, is just a few blocks away from the school. We're in the town's main square. And here, what you have seen is many more people show up to this fountain and show up with roses and they place them at every single memorial. And then you have loved ones who will literally sit in front of their loved one's memorial, either be a child or you obviously you had reference there are two teachers. This is a scene that has been going on throughout the course of the morning and we do know that the families have numerous events that are taking place throughout the course of the day. They have asked for privacy for many of those events. You have church services as well as the release of butterflies into the air. Um, but you come to this square and you are immediately overtaken by the memorials and the images of these young faces all over again because we all remembered the tragedy of last year's shooting as well as the challenges and exactly what happened to law enforcement on that day that they didn't go into that classroom and those are questions that are still trying to be answered to make things easier for the children here you have support dogs that have come to help not only alleviate the kids but also uh, family members adults have been petting the dogs as well throughout the course of the morning the number 21 is very prevalent here as you see families have 21 on their shirts signifying symbolic of the 21 victims as well as as what they have is shirts that say Uvalde strong. But this is the scene right now here in Uvalde one year after that tragedy. I'm Mario Diaz reporting in Uvalde. Well, you know, KPRC2 investigates. Mario, you did just mention how people still have a lot of questions about how law enforcement responded right. that day. So just based on you being there and talking to the people in Uvalde, how much animosity are you feeling there is towards the law enforcement there? You know, Haley, that's a point that you're making there that many people have talked about for quite some time. You don't see it here right now, but I'm going to just take you right across the street. You're going to follow me. We have a red light, but I'm going to point over here and you can see there's a gentleman right there that says uh, we want accountability. His name is Michael Brown. He is the father of four kids within the school district. His children knew some of the victims. His family knew of one right down the street. And he's been holding that sign there up all morning long saying that he wants accountability for this situation, for this tragedy. But he also says that they should prosecute the former police chief here, Chief Arrodando, uh, the C, the, uh, the Uvalde, uh, consolidated Independent School District police chief here. Um, but he is the one person that's been demanding action. And you talk to citizens in the community. Uh, yes, there are many people that are frustrated with law enforcement. They have made a massive change with many members of the department. Uh, but then you also talk, I talked to one grandmother, excuse me, to one family member today who said to me, quite frankly, she said, yes, it is difficult, but we have to move forward and we have to trust those who are here to protect us. And I will tell you, there's law enforcement from all over this area that has come in here in the recent months and over the past year to help, how would I say, perhaps bridge the trust between community and law enforcement in arguably one of the most difficult situations that local law enforcement here in this region has seen. Haley? Residents, as you mentioned, remain frustrated with law enforcement. How has this tragedy changed the trajectory of law enforcement there? Andy, you know, that's a point that we have been investigating for quite some time at KPRC2 investigates immediately following this tragedy last year. Uh, I'm going to step away so you can see behind me as I explain why, because we have had members of law enforcement statewide have events to showcase various uh, 
programs that they have. We know that there's a school marshal program. That, that is the program where you are to arm school personnel to help get them uh, properly trained and prepared for tragedy. There also is the training that we have seen in local schools. We know that when we were in Montgomery County just last November, there was a school that they changed completely to help turn it into a, a school to train police officers better. There is more collaboration, Andy. There is also more communication. But that's the very latest here in Uvalde. Mario Diaz, KPRC2 Investigates. Well, Mario, you're showing us why it's so important to have reporters out there showing the emotions of the city that day. We are still very much healing with them and praying for the families. Thank you, Mario.